The Adventures of Sam Spade, Detective. Brought to you by Wild Root Cream Oil Hair Tonic. The non-alcoholic hair tonic that contains lanolin. Wild Root Cream Oil. Again and again, the choice of men who put good grooming first. Office of Samuel Spade, Private Investment. Uh, I mean, Investigation. Good morning. Uh, evening. Happy? Miss Perrine is on a vacation. Perhaps I may be of assistance, no doubt. I don't know. To whom am I speaking to? I am sorry. I cannot devolve that information to an entire stranger. May I take a message? Look, uh, Miss Whoever you are, I don't want to discommode you, but... I, I am sorry, but I will have to ask you in no certain terms to resist from this line you are handing me. I am not the type secretary. Forget it. I'll just call Miss Perrine long distance and dictate my report over the phone. Oh, oh my darling daughter. How have we doubt you me, Mr. Spade? Oh, I'm bandaging Effie's relief. I, I mean yours. I could use some. Oh, shall I send out for some medicine? Yeah. The phone number's on the wall behind the water cooler. Tell them the hundred crew bond it and hang the expense. I'll be right down to dictate my report on the bail bond caper. Dashiell Hammett, America's leading detective fiction writer and creator of Sam Spade, the hard-boiled private eye, and William Spear, radio's outstanding producer-director of mystery and crime drama, join their talents to make your hair stand on end with the adventures of Sam Spade. Presented by the makers of Wild Root Cream Oil for the hair. Only three days left, gals, and June, the month of weddings, will be over. But don't worry, there are still 187 days left in leap year. Still time to snag the man of your dreams. You know, the one who uses Wild Root Cream Oil on his hair. He and millions of other men use Wild Root Cream Oil daily. Because Wild Root Cream Oil grooms the hair so neatly and naturally. Relieves dryness and removes loose dandruff. Any smart man who wants to look smart always insists on Wild Root Cream Oil hair tonic. Again and again, the choice of men who put good grooming first. And now, with Howard Duff starring as Spade, Wild Root brings to the air the greatest private detective of them all in the adventures of Sam Spade. Yes, but why? It was fate. I knew it was going to be like this. I have my qualms, too, Bernadine. Oh, that's good. I, I sent the other back. The other what? I called that number, but it was euphonious. They said whiskey. Is something the matter? Uh, no. No, nothing at all. I'm perfectly qualm. Well, I'm glad. My previous employer was very nervous, which is why I just happened to be tentatively at large when Effie reproached me about being a relief to her. Figures. Uh, Bernadine, now I'm not being fresh. Honestly, I'm not, but do you take shorthand? Yeah, but I don't speak it. What is that you speak? Don't answer. Uh, ready? Rodney. Uh, I mean, Roger. Yeah. Uh, date. I'll have to ask my mother. Down, Bernadine. Uh, date June 27, 1948, to Miss Effie Perrine, care of Perry's Lodge, Canab, the Pearl of the West, Utah. What? Oh, uh, wrong letter. I'll get to that later. Uh... Date, uh, June 27, 1948, to Leo M. Scarlett, care of Leaf Branch, Root, Knox, and Wood, Attorneys at Law, 333 Pine Street, San Francisco, from Samuel Spade, license number 27596. Subject, the bail bond caper. Dear Leo, I'm sorry things turned out the way they did, Leo, and I'd like you to know how I got into it. If it wasn't for the reward, I don't take reward. I'm not in love with your wife, no matter what she says, and I wasn't sore at you about anything. I was just sitting in my office, minding my own business when the door opened, and Vivian walked in. She looked every bit as beautiful as she did when she lived under me in Ma Tuttle's boarding house in 41. In fact, I didn't recognize her until she slithered out of her mink. Hello, Sam. Surprised to see me? Uh, yeah, but I'm trying not to show it. What's on your mind? Is that all you've got to say to me, Sam? Well, you're here on business, aren't you? All right, I don't blame you. It all happened pretty sudden, Leo and me. I should have written or phoned you, I suppose, but somehow... Forget it, Vivian. Now, uh, what do you need a detective for? Are you uh, thinking of divorce already? Oh, please, don't say. 
If it was a mistake, I'm the one who has to live with it. And I made up my mind when I married Leo this time it's the key. No matter what. Mm -hmm. What for what? He's in trouble, Sam. Well, that's nothing new. Well, this time I don't think it's his fault. When Leo went with Jimmy Mendes. What's he say he's doing now? He's a bail bond broker. Judging from your new look, I'd say he's a success. Sam, a man called him on the phone today. I answered. He said his name was Holiday, but I recognized his voice. It was an old friend of Leo's, Charlie Rosenborn. Charlie, huh? When did he get out? A couple weeks back. He was paroled. I don't know what he said over the phone, but Leo looked scared and sick. I don't wonder. The word around town was that Charlie took the rap for Leo. And I don't know anything about that. All I know is Leo's on the level now, and Charlie never will be. He did plenty on his own during that time, he said. Well, I won't argue that, but from where I sit, it looks like Leo better start wearing a gun again. He has. That's what I'm so frantic about, Sam. Did you hear any of the conversations from Leo's then? He didn't say much. But I did hear him say, All right, ten tonight, I'll meet you there. I wasn't very smart of him. I know, but that's the way he is. It might be only for a payoff. I thought of that, too. But Leo hasn't got that kind of money. He's been dropping a lot at the racetracks lately. And even if he had it, he's not the type to pay blackmail. I don't like it. Why should I stick my neck out? Why did you have to come to me anyway? Because I trust you, Sam. I know you were jealous of Leo. I was? Sam, if we ever meant anything, if you meant half the things you said to me, then we... Stop it. That's blackmail. Oh, I feel so lost and alone. I don't know where to stand. Okay, okay. I'll see what I can do. Oh, Sam. I'll make it up to you somehow. You see if I don't. Sure you will. And tell Leo to stop dropping his money at San Ferran. This is going to cost them plenty. <laughs> Vivian had said that your rendezvous with Charlie was scheduled for 10 in the p.m. and that you were too upset to go to work that day, so you'd be at home, 1246 Dunbar. I took a plan in your apartment building from a sleepy lagoon-type cocktail bar across the street called, you guessed it, the Sweet Leilani. Your wife joined me, and after a while, we got around to talking. At least she did. <laughs> I bet you can't guess what I'm thinking about. Huh? Listen, Sam. You remember that night we drove to Half, half Moon? Hey. Oh, you do remember. Oh, we used to do the craziest things. I should have married you, Sam. Please, not while I'm drinking. You know what? The trouble with cooks... They have to work day and night. Yeah. Hey, you're not listening. No, but everybody else in the place is. Let's talk about you, Sam. Did I ever tell you how I met Leo? No, and please don't. And then he opened a bucket shop. You know what a bucket shop is? Yeah. It's stock brook. Brokerage. Yeah, that's right. I don't need to cook it. That was the first business Leo started when he went with Dick. Mm -hmm. He had to shut it down on account of those securities. Somebody was always stealing out of the safe. Were they insured? Yeah, but they wouldn't renew his policy. So after the second nightclub burned down and he couldn't get any insurance at all, even on his own life. That's why I'm so proud, Sam. Hey, give me a nickel. I want to play sweet little Annie. Fifty nickels and two hours later, Sweet Leilani broke under the strain, so we had Princess Papuli to leave in that gave out, and we were starting on the Hawaiian war chant when she disappeared to a door marked Wahini, Hawaiian for powder room, and never came back. Around 9.45, I mumbled something to the bartender about the lady will pay, put on my smoke glasses, and strolled out and across the street. You came out of the building a couple of minutes later. You led me a zigzag course up Merchant Street to Salon, across Salon to Commercial, down Commercial to Drum, and made a lateral pass over Drum back to Dunbar. Your destination, I'd never have guessed it, was the Sweet Leilani. Happily, they were not playing Sweet Leilani. It was very, very quiet. The regular customers had taken a powder, and I didn't blame them. In the new crop at the bar, I counted ten broken noses, at least five broken paroles, assorted knife scars, and four pairs of cauliflower ears, and one maverick. You slid into a booth at the end of the bar, took the gun out of your shoulder holster, and laid it down on the table in front of you. I walked over, turned it around, so it was pointing at the jukebox instead of me, and sat down. Some other time, Spade. Some other time I drink with you. I'm waiting for a friend. Why the gun? 
You selling it to him? Maybe I give it to him. Go on, you drink at the bar. Ah, it's kind of crowded. Looks like uh, Charlie Rosenfoy's old mob. Who are they gunning for? You or Charlie? Why don't you ask them? What are you drinking, Leo? I was with that bottle all day. Got a bad taste. Do me a favor, Spade. There's a bar two doors down the street. Go drink there. There's my friend coming in the door. Any friend of yours is a friend of mine, Leo. Look, Spade. Hello, Leo. What's the matter? You bring a bodyguard to meet your old friend Charlie? This Sharma threw his weight in here. I didn't ask him. I don't need him. Huh. That sounds like the old Leo Scarlatti I used to. The name is Scarlet. Oh, pardon me. I've been on the rock for so long, it's hard to catch up on all the changes. There's been a war, Charlie. Anyone touch you through it yet? You got a smart bodyguard, Leo. Let's talk. Let's go somewhere else and talk. Uh, I like it here. Okay, we start. How come you tipped the mob we were coming here? You promised you wouldn't. Like the shamas, they got a drink somewhere. All right, say what's in your mind and I'll go. Yeah, and if you don't mind, I think I'll uh, do my drinking at the bar. Both of your guns were on the table. It didn't look as though you were going to use them on one another, and I figured that neither of you was going to do much talking in front of me anyway, so I strolled back to the end of the bar to look at the television. The 10 o'clock news roundup was on, and the ticket tape that was moving across the screen said dot, dot, dot in Atlantic City today, period. I ordered a highball, and then the ticket tape started again. This time it said San Francisco, million-dollar bail bond robbery. One million dollars in negotiable bonds is tonight in the hands of a group of daring hold-up men who commandeered an armored truck at the very portals of the police department in the Hall of Justice. And it said this concludes the 10 o'clock edition of the television news roundup. I had a slight hunch that if the television boys had had their cameras on the big bail bond robbery, that at least some of the characters would have been played by at least some of the bad actors that were foregathered in the sweet Leilani. In fact, what you and Charlie were saying and doing when I walked back to your booth was almost too much to the point. You let me see the bulky portfolio Charlie shoved across the table at you. It looked like a carrying case of a bond, bank message type. But it was sealed with wax blobs bearing the imprint of the great seal of the state of California. I was impressed. Where'd you get this? You can read about it in the papers. And if I was you, I'd get this out of sight before them papers hit the street. One thing more. Don't try to clip none of them coupons. And one thing more in addition. Don't open it at all. Sure. Dave? Yeah, Leon? I think I hire you after all. <laughs> I took the job and you handed me the portfolio. Outside, we flagged the taxi and you gave the driver an address on Portsmouth Square. Your office, I hate to remind you, was behind one of a bunch of neon lighted storefronts across from the Hall of Justice. The sign on the door said, Press the button and let freedom ring any hour, day or night. The only bell in sight was a stop press type burglar alarm. You unlocked the door and we went in. You paused in front of a big green safe with a combination lock and started twirling the knob. The tumblers clicked into place. I picked up an inkwell and waited for the safe to open. Uh-huh. All right, Spade, give me it. I did, with both hands. With my left, I handed you the portfolio, and with my right, I pitched the inkwell at a well-wired slab of plate glass window. When the burglar alarm went into action, so did you. You dropped everything and were...